my phone here just so I can kind of have, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, man, like having this monitor control app for the FX3 kind of makes me not want to even use my A7S3 like that as much, man, just because it's just, it's it's so much easier to YouTube when you're over here, hit record, stop record, it's just, it's just crazy. But today we're not talking about that, right? So today we are talking about, make sure my levels are good, all right. Today we're actually talking about the Ursa Mini 12K Pro. Now, Blackmagic did send me this, but to be real, I didn't even have to make a video about it. I'm just choosing to because I really wanted you all to know just, you know, kind of what this what this camera delivers, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? To be real. And also kind of like if you are new to using a cinema camera like I am, this is my first cinema camera ever outside of the FX3 and the FX30, right? I mean, go ahead and make sure I correct that. But this is my first cinema camera, you know, of like this magnitude where like prime example, there's no HDMI on this camera. Like there's only SDI and you know, you can record straight to an SSD, you know what I'm saying? Straight from the, like from a USB-C port, all that good stuff. You know, we got like a actual viewfinder here. So when I said like, this is my first cinema camera, like this is my first, you know, we'll call it true cinema camera, whatever that means, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I just kind of wanted to make this video just like for people who've never used a cinema camera who's maybe like who's been using mirrorless bodies for like a very long time and they kind of want to know like what to step into this is by no means a full review but i just feel like this video will be necessary for people who've never used a cinema camera before and it's kind of like want to let y'all know like the ins and outs of it so if you like today's audio if we are using a Rode wireless pro and if you like today's lighting we are using the new pavel slim 120c which i will be doing an unboxing and a full review of this light, but so far I love it. It's definitely my new YouTube light. Uh, I got my notes here, if you see it like on cam, like ignore it, but I just wanna make sure that I discuss and go over everything so far in my first thing in this. And I'll be showing you all just some B-roll clips of you know me just using the camera and good stuff like that, right? So the, the first thing I would wanna, you know what I'm saying, to go over is the fact that if you have no prior experience to using um, a cinema camera like, like this, and we're not even talking about like a black magic camera. I'm gonna say like a cinema camera. There is a learning curve. There is definitely a learning curve. Now, I will say black magic makes that learning curve a lot easier just because of how like functional their menu system is. And first of all, let me, let me just go ahead and say this. Everyone needs to like, if there was something that needs to be copied, black magic menu design needs to be copied. Like everybody needs to do black magic menu design so i'm gonna see if my second angle kind of pick this up real quick but i kind of really do want to show you all like the menu system real quick probably from this angle if i if i have to um you know like zoom in or something like that i will but you know like being able just to tap everything on screen just to kind of bring everything up um hidden uh hidden just a, a, a touching anything on screen will get you to where you need to be. So if you need to change the frame rate, the tint, the white balance, like whatever you need to do, you can just tap on this screen and you will get to it. Like, I love that. Like, I love the fact that to be real, I don't even have to go into the menu system to make changes what I need to make, whether it's frame rate, whatever, like literally whatever I need to change. It's right here on this touch screen. Like I, man, bro, like that is, that's fire. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I know that may be like a, a small thing to some, but for me, being able to have that type of functionality, that's about like, okay, boom, 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 boom. All right, I'm done, I'm ready to shoot. Um, I thought it's phenomenal. You know what I mean? I, I think that is phenomenal. However, if you still just not like, you know, have no prior experience to using maybe a black magic camera at all, it may definitely be like a learning curve. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. I think, so first time using a black magic camera ever, being way more experienced using mirrorless cameras, I think, it's not a grab and go initially like it's not something that you can pick up and automatically assume that you got it like oh turn it on okay i'm gonna set this dial i'm gonna set my iris or iso or what have you no it's something you really do have to become acclimated to the dials the settings um and all the menus like all of those things have to be something you spend time with uh just to understand the camera it's a lot of camera the next thing i definitely want to talk about is like this is not a grab and go camera um, this is not something that you're just gonna pick up and go shoot something with, and we're gonna talk about why in a second, but there's one main reason it stops it from being a pick up and go camera. Uh, it's very easy to like, once you kind of get in and start like kind of like figure stuff out, you definitely wanna play with this camera a bit, but this is not something like, hey, yo, bro, you wanna go, you wanna go shoot some stuff outside tonight? Yeah, sure. This ain't, this ain't for that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, to me, this is a, you have a film, you have a major production that you're doing, this is the camera for that. 
This is not like to me a leisurely go dad cam type of thing. That this ain't this ain't this ain't it, fam. This ain't it. But I don't think it was made to be that. So like you know, take that for what it's worth. Speaking of learning curves, the first learning curve is they actually uh, sent me the one that is a PL mount, right? And I asked for that specifically because I never used a PL mount. I used the EF system before, so I really wanted to test you know an EL mount uh, PL mount camera out. So I ended up getting a Great Joy 50 mil um, T 2.9 and a Morphic 1.8 squeeze. And now I will say the learning curve was trying to find out how to um, even find the D squeeze option in here. But once I found it, it made sense. Like, okay, I get it. Um, there's actually like an anamorphic setting. And I think for the most part, Black Magic automatically applies the correct D squeeze. I don't know how they're doing it, but they did. And so, you know, when I put this, this lens on the first time, so let me, first of all, let me take this off. Uh, when I put this lens on the first time, now this just could be me just being dumb okay i'm just gonna be real with you but i put it on like upside down so like you know pretty well sideways so it was like this originally like you know to so make sure i show this on a cam on my second angle and hopefully y'all can see this but it was kind of like you know it, it wasn't on correctly it was the like the you know it should be right side up so if you're using a anamorphic lens this like you need to be able to see this right side up on the camera like at all times. If you don't, then that means you installed it incorrectly and your image is gonna reflect that. So if you're using an anamorphic lens for the first time, you wanna make sure that like the, the how it looks, if you will, like the spherical, spherical thing, like it needs to be, um, I guess like up, right side up. I hope this is making sense, B, but it needs to like look like this. So hopefully y'all see that it needs to be like up like that. So um, when I put it on the first time, I did not. So now when I put it on now, I know how to instantly put it on correctly. And I probably just did it incorrect again. And this is, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is a learning curve, right? So the first time I put it on, I put it on incorrectly. And if you have like any play, the lens will fall out, okay? Trust me on that. I've already been a testament to that. So let me make sure I am putting this on correctly. Like you should be able to turn the wheel and like you should like really feel it like lock in place like there should be no play so let's try this again again there should be no play I, I, I wish I was playing about like putting this lens on this camera but, but I'm not I'm, I'm really not I have I kind of haven't if somebody had like a tip to put on PL mount lenses correctly Please let me know down in the comments down below, man, because it is, you know, it's, like I said, it's, it's a learning curve. So let's try that. Nope. Okay. I got it. Got it. All right. So if I had a tip for you all, make sure that when you're putting it on, make sure that the lens is like all the way on there, stable and like pushed in and make sure that the, this wheel here, make sure that this, like this thing is turned all the way so you can make sure that you're it's fully unlocked because if it's not fully unlocked, you're not gonna be able to put it in correctly and you're gonna have a hard time. So, you know, out the gate, that was definitely, you know, one of the learning curves uh, I was talking about. Now, once you kind of get past that learning curve of, you know, installing this thing, the image is like, oh, uh, wait a minute, I think we're jumping ahead of ourselves. Okay, we're gonna, no, we can go ahead, we're gonna skip, we're gonna skip a top. We're gonna go to that now. Let me tell you something, bro. Let me tell you something right now. I wanna get to a pro right away for this camera. The image, it, listen, they weren't lying. You know how, like, listen, y'all know how sometimes, like, YouTubers be like, oh, man, it's just, oh, it's, you know. <laughs> how can I say this without being, uh, how can I keep this PG? They be um, horseback riding, okay? We'll use that. They be horseback riding other YouTubers and just other brands just so they can get more stuff. And, you know, sometimes you got to take what they say with a grain of salt. However, this is, a, this, is a, this is one of those unusual cases where I can see why they are riding so hard because the image, like, it's, this is it, okay? Like, just shooting straight out of camera, I'm getting a film look. This is I'm, no lighting, no, no bounce. Like, everything y'all seen is just me outside just shooting. I feel like Spike Lee out there, bro. Like, I'm out, like, it looks that good straight out of camera. And I'm like, damn, bro, like, you telling me, like, if I just go out and shoot something, like, it's gonna look, it's gonna look, quote unquote, cinematic, and it does. Like, it definitely checks that box. I absolutely love the image that comes out of this camera. Um, now, keep in mind, let me, let's, let's go ahead and make one thing clear here, okay? When it comes to cameras and their image, understand this. 
a camera's image is nothing but data, meaning that any camera that you have, if you have enough data, you can make any camera look like any camera. You know what I'm saying? So don't think that, you know, you can't achieve this look with any other camera, but it's gonna be, it's way easier when you already have the camera, I will say that, but just understand that an image is nothing but data, and it's how you manipulate that data and what you do with it to get the image that you want. But this camera makes it a lot easier, okay? We can go ahead and keep that a buck right here. Oh, I kinda see what they mean by rolling shutter. Okay, yeah, the rolling shutter is a little But anyway, so, you know, if you, you know, if you are getting this camera and you're getting it for an image, you will not be disappointed. Next, now, you know, as great as the image is, one thing that I also did notice with a camera like this is like, again, it's a big boy. This is, this is the big boy. It's heavy as hell, bro. Bro, it's heavy, it's heavy, dog. Like, it's heavy, like, you pick this, you, like, listen, this, this is what I mean by it's not like a, it's not like a, like a pick up and go camera, because you pick it up, you instantly feel the weight. And for somebody who's just recovered from tendonitis, I can't even lift this up with my left wrist at all yet. So I can only pick it up like this, but as I'm picking it up, I, like, bro, I, this is the weight. This is, elite. to me, just some, like, going to the gym, lifting weights, this is at least, I feel like it's 10 to 15 pounds. Yeah, I feel like this is 10 to 15 pounds. I could probably throw up the real weight on screen, but I feel like this is a 10 to 15 pound camera. And uh, you feel me? Like, it's, it's, it's heavy as hell. I don't, I don't really know any other way to put that, dog. Like, it's, this camera is heavy as hell. You know, and you're, if you're coming from a mirrorless type body, you're definitely gonna notice that. And that's something that you wanna be mindful of when you are, um, you know what I'm saying, like going to check out this camera. So I definitely recommend people to rent cameras and check stuff out before they just go out and buy it because you need to fit, you, you need to grab something that works for your style and your style of shooting. And, you know, again, everything that glitters ain't gold. And just because they're like somebody else gonna be good with it and have great results doesn't mean that you're gonna have that same result. So I 100% recommend that you go out, try a, a camera for yourself before you just sit there and take the word of somebody else. Because even with mine, like I'm gonna give you an experience that I had, but you may get in, you're like, yo bro, you just soft. It ain't that heavy, but it's heavy. So moving on to the next one. Oh, it's gonna be price point. We kind of covered everything. I ain't gonna make this video no longer than it has to be. Um, the price point, now you can find this camera used, I blew my mind. You can find this camera used for $38.50 on eBay. Probably a little cheaper in some areas. Now that's a four year old camera but dog, you feel me? Like it's a twelve, it's a twelve K camera, bro. Like it's it's twelve K. You know what I'm saying? Like you got cameras that's just getting up to eight K. So like you are future proof for a very long time. Um, you know. Also, I want to add that editing Blackmagic Raw, even editing these twelve K clips, I was using a Samsung T7 drive with two terabytes, and I was, you know, I had no problem recording uh, storage there. And you know, the codecs don't be, you know, the codecs may be big. I was shooting like five to one. You don't have to shoot five to one. You can easily shoot twelve to one. Still give beautiful imagery. You do not have to shoot 12K. If I meant, let's go ahead and go into the menu system. Cause you have like a plethora of recording options. You have 12K, 8K, 6K, 4K, you know, anamorphic, D squeeze, super 16, 17 by nine. Like you have a plethora of things to choose from. Now, also one thing to keep in mind, this only records in Blackmagic RAW. Some of you don't know that about the Ursa 12K. You have no ProRes option. There's no like Rec 709 straight out of cam type of thing, you know, H.265, none of that. This is a straight Blackmagic RAW camera. So if you're somebody that needs to deliver stuff to your clients, like, you know, quick, fast, in a hurry, this is kind of like not the cam for that if they kind of like want the raw footage, especially if they don't edit in DaVinci Resolve. So be mindful of that. But again, you know, like I said, you know, if you are a, I would say if you are a filmmaker, like at your core, if you are a filmmaker, get this camera. If you do like just straight interviews and you like a lot of tripod setups and don't need like a lot of gimbal work because there's nothing going on no gimbal, grab this camera. You know what I mean? Like this, this is the specific use case camera. Like every camera is not for everybody and that's okay. Um, in a perfect world, I would, I, you know, I, yeah, this, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to say that, but I love it. I would definitely give you all more of a full review when I talk about this camera, like in more in depth, but I really just kind of wanted to give you all my preliminary thoughts. Um, go ahead and give me a nice little clean thumbnail. Wow. I really just want to give you all my preliminary thoughts about this camera. Um, because again, you know, I've never used a cinema camera like this. And if you all haven't either, you know, then that's something definitely, you know, to be mindful of. So overall, my thoughts and opinions about this camera is I absolutely freaking love it. It, you know, no camera is perfect, no perfect. No camera is perfect. Every camera has its pros and cons. And I think if you are willing to accept some of the trade off that this camera produces and, um, you know, based off the image quality and just is, you know, just black magic and editing DaVinci, like this is like, if this is speaking to you, if this is speaking to your soul, pick up this camera. 
just be mindful of some of the drawbacks that you will have. That's all. But if you enjoyed the video, man, I do have like a lot more BTS stuff that I do on IG. So make sure you find me over there with Brooks Media. That's Brooks Media with two S's. You got the S, you ain't spelling it right. Make sure you leave a thumbs up and I catch you on the next one. Deuces.